This is part one of lesson 4.4. Today we're going to talk about composition of functions. Okay, first thing we're going to do is talk about the notation. And so we've got this little dot and it looks kind of like a multiplication, but it's open. And that is a composition operator. So this operator is a small centered circle. It is said composed with or of for short. It means to evaluate the left side of the function of the right side of the function. So we are going to take this notation right here. Notice that it's the same thing as that. So a lot of times, instead of writing F and then the little circle O, because it kind of looks like fog, we write F of G of X. So notice how I said that. I don't usually or hardly ever say F is composed with G of X. I'll say F of G of X. And then G of F of X would go the other way. So let's go ahead and investigate how we do that. So we're going to, for this example, we're going to let f of x be this function. g of x is going to equal that function. So number one, where I do f of g of 2, kind of like we did before with operations, we're going to say, first of all, what's g of 2? So g of 2 is going to be negative 2 squared. So that's negative 4. So what I'm really asking right here is I'm saying, what's f of negative 4? So that would be 3 times negative 4 minus 4. So that's negative 12 minus 4 is negative 16. So for this particular one, f of g of 2 is negative 16. So you want to study how I did that. Make sure that you understand what, what I'm doing with each piece. Look at number 2. I'm going to first take g of negative 2. So that's going to be negative, negative 2 squared. So I've got the negative. And then x is squared, that means all of x is squared, the negative and the 2. So it's going to be negative and then positive 4, because negative 2 squared is 4. And so that's negative 4. So the next thing I'm asking is what is f of negative 4? So f of negative 4 is 3 times negative 4 minus 4, which is also equal to negative 16. So you notice it has the same answer as the last one, you don't really notice that they're necessarily the same. It's kind of like if you have 3 plus 2, it's the same as 1 plus 4. And that doesn't necessarily mean that there's some magic trick to knowing that. It's just something that happens. Okay, the next one, we're going to do f of f of 2. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find f of 2, which is 6 minus 4, so that's 2. And then I'm going to find f of that 2. And that's, of course, also going to be 2. So f of f of 2 is 2. Now, don't try to look for some magic pattern in that. That's just coincidence. We're not going to see that with everything that we do. Number 4, we're going to take g of g of 2. So g of 2, working from the inside, we're going to say negative and then 2 squared. So that's going to be negative 4. And then we're going to take g of negative 4, which means negative, negative 4 squared. So negative 4 squared is 16, and then negative. So that's equal to negative 16. So those are some examples of evaluating functions. And we'll talk more as we go throughout the year about evaluating functions at certain points. We've seen a little bit of this before but I'll kind of talk about it as we go this time and then in other lessons as well. Okay, the next one we're going to do, we're going to find f of g of x and then g of f of x. So f is composed of g or g is composed of f. Now, the way that you do this, you've got to be really careful that you pay attention to what you're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make two workspaces. For the f of g of x, I'll do it in red. And for the g of f of x, I'm going to do it in purple. I want you to notice how they're different. So f of g of x, I'm going to take my g of x, and I'm going to put it in to f. So I'm going to put it in to f. So f of g of x means I'm going to take whatever g of x is, and I'm going to put it in place of x in my f function. So that means that f of g of x is equal to x plus 1. 
All right, now I'm going to go to my other one. I'm going to do g of f of x. That means I'm going to take my f of x and I'm going to put it into g. So I'm going to take my f of x and I'm going to put it into g. So it's going to be 2 times. You want to make sure you use parentheses when you're doing this. If you don't, you're very likely going to get either signs messed up or not multiply the right thing. So you want to make sure that you're using parentheses. That's also going to be the same as if you say it like this. Over on the left, that's the same as if you say it like this. So one thing to notice for sure is that f of g of x is not the same as g of f of x. So they're not, you can't like go backwards and forwards and it means the same thing. So make sure that you're aware of that fact. Okay, number six. If f of x equals 3x and g of x equals 2x plus 3, find f of g of x. So I'm going to take g of x and I'm going to put it into f for x. So 3 times g of x. So that's 6x plus 9. And that's, whoops, that's what f of g of x is. So you should write something like, okay, and the other one, I'm going to do g of f of x. That means I'm going to take f of x, I'm going to put it into g. So I'm going to take f of x, I'm going to put it into g of x. So 2 times whatever x is plus 3. So that's 6x plus 3. Notice your 2 does not get distributed because there's no parentheses there. So this one will be g of f of x equals 6x plus 3. So again, they're not the same thing. Okay, number 7. Go ahead and try 7 and 8, and then come back and let's see if you get it right. What you should have done on number 7 to do f of g of x, you're going to take your g and you're going to put it into f. So negative 3 times negative 5x squared minus 1. So the first part you're going to do is this part. So negative 5x times negative 5x. Multiply by negative 3 and then subtract 1. So negative 75x squared minus 1. Okay, on the other side, to do g of f of x, you're going to take f of x and put it into g. So I'm going to take f of x and put it into g. So negative 5 times f of x. So I'm going to have distributing. And that's going to be your g of f of x. Okay, number eight. Again, for my two spaces, I'm going to have two separate workspaces. So f of g of x, I'm going to take my g, I'm going to put it into f. So negative 2 times negative 2x squared plus 3. That's going to be 4x squared minus 6. For my g of f of x, I'm going to take my f of x and put it into g. Kind of like when you're solving systems by substitution, I feel like it helps a lot when you use arrows to show what you're doing. I feel like it helps your mind kind of wrap around what is happening. So watch your signs, watch your exponents, all the other things that you need to watch. Make sure you're not multiplying when you shouldn't be, so don't distribute that. Okay, so this one is our g of f of x, and this one is our f of g of x. It doesn't matter which way you write it. Okay, now the next one, we are going to be given f of x as a set of ordered pairs, and g of x is a set of ordered pairs. So I don't have a rule or like an equation for f of x. I just have some points. And so it's kind of like, you know, if I was just to graph the points, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, like that's my function. It's just a set of points. Okay, but we're going to do composition with these. So this is kind of interesting to watch. We're going to take g. I feel like it's easier to write it like this to understand what's happening. We are going to take our f of x. That's going to be our input. And so we're going to input our f of x and get something out. And then we're going to take that and we're going to put it into G. So watch carefully. I'll do this first one and then you're going to try one and see if you can get it. 
All right, so I'm going to take my f of x, which is this, I'm going to put it in. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with my input, which is 1. When I put in 1, I get out 1. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in over there. So my input of 1 is right there. When I put in 1, I get out 2. So my g of f of x is going to be input 1, get out 2. Okay, let's try the next one. My next input is 2, I get out 3. So I'm going to take my 3 as my input over here. I'm going to put in 3, I get out 4. So I put in 2, I get out 4. Okay, next, I'm going to put in 4, I get out 2. So my input is 4. I get out 2 and I'm going to put that over here. So I'm going to put in 2, I get out 3. Okay, next, we're going to put in 3, get out 4. So I put 4 in over here. I put in 4, I get out 5. So I'm going to put in 3 at the beginning, right there. I get out 5 at the end. Okay, we've got one more. So we're going to put in 5, I get out 0. I'm going to put 0 in, I get out 1. So I put in 5, I get out 1. So my g of f of x is that, that set of ordered pairs. Okay, I'm going to erase that example. I'm going to have you pause the video, and I want you to try doing f of g of x. Okay, what you should do is you're going to start with a set notation. You're going to have input and output, so you're going to have your parentheses. And since we're doing all of the points, you're going to have all of the ordered pairs. And I kind of started this too far over, so I'm going to make some more space here. I have five ordered pairs all together, so this is what my answer is going to be for number 10. Okay, so this time I'm going to take g of x, and I'm going to put it into f. So I'm doing the opposite of what I did last time. So I'm going to start with g, input 0, I get out 1. So I'm going to come over here and put in 1, I get out 1. Next, I start with input 1, get out 2. I'm going to put in 2, I get out 3. So I input 1 at the beginning, I got out 3 at the end. Next, I'm going to input 2, I get out 3. So I'm going to input 3, I'm going to get out 4. So at the beginning, I input 2, I got out 4. Next one, I'm going to input 3, get out 4. I'm going to input 4, get out 2. So I put in 3, I got out 2. And then the last one, I'm going to input 4, I get out 5. I'm going to put in 5, I get out 0. So I input 4, I get out 0. So this is your function that you're going to have as your composition. So if you evaluate the function f at the points g, that's what you get. So you want to make sure you can make sense of that. Okay, practice that. We're going to do this next with some specific points. So this next one, number 11, find g of f of 4. Well, I just need to know what is f of 4. So look at your function f. If you input 4, what do you get? You get 2. So what I'm asking you is I'm asking you what's g of 2. So look at your g of x. If you input 2, you get out 3. So g of f of 4 is equal to 3 on number 11. So pause this and do number 12. For number 12, you're going to do g of 2 first. And so I'm going to go to g, and I'm going to put in 2. I get out 3. So what I'm asking you here is what is f of 3? So if I put in 3 into f, I get out 4. So the answer to this is f of g of 2 is equal to 4. Okay, we'll continue this in the last part of the lesson.